Hello and welcome back everyone. We are now about 20% through our syllabus as you would have finished the first unit and the first five chapters and I hope we are making headway in our preparations. And today we will focus our attention to the next unit in our syllabus called Human Resource Management or HRM. And before we get into the nitty gritty of what HR is supposed to do, I just wanted to give you guys an overview of what to expect when we're going through this unit. Okay? Now, since the name itself is human resource management, we understand that it has to do with the labor side of the business. You will remember labor from being one of the resources of the business without which you can't produce, you can't serve. So it's an extremely vital part of a business and making sure that you have the right people in the right place, in the right mindset is what the HR department is supposed to do. Now, I've also discussed it before that the four units starting from two to five HR, marketing, operations, and finance are the four basic departments or the four functions that every business would have. And HR then is that side which makes sure that they're bringing in the right people and they're giving the opportunity to the right people at the right times. And we also know that employees are everywhere in a business. Right? When I say that, I mean every department, marketing would have its people, HR, its own finance, its own, and of course, marketing, its own employees. But making sure that they're all feeling motivated, they are getting paid fairly for the work they're doing, and they're also developing within the business is the responsibility of the HR department. So it's not just one thing that HR looks after. They will give you a chance to grow. They'll give you, they'll give you promotions. They'll give you a company car should you deserve it. So there are many things that HR is involved in when it comes to the employee side. And, and HR also provides an important function for all the other departments. For example, since HR is at the core of everything employee related, let's say the marketing department needs to change their employee. Maybe someone's not been performing. It's not the marketing department responsibility to do that. Marketing will contact HR and they will make sure that the right person is brought in for that position. Let's say operations needs to be restructured. Somebody is leaving and we need to promote someone. That's also something that HR will make sure that it's happening in a fair manner, moving people up the corporate ladder. Let's say finance needs to hire somebody. They're short of people. The recruitment side, bringing people in, hiring is also done by HR. So from bringing people in to the point that we're feeling satisfied and keeping a good work-life balance, everything is done by the HR department. So let's hope we all understand what the scope of the department is. And now we will move on towards the first chapter in this unit called Management and Leadership. Now, one of the key components of the HR department is to make sure that they have the right managers in place. So people who can get things done, who know how teams work, who have a clear idea of how to make sure that everyone is working towards a common goal, which is what we call leadership. So sure, managers have to be leaders, but that's just one of the activities that they have to perform. And we're gonna look at what other things that they're responsible for as managers when they're given a certain position. Now, before we get deeper into what exactly managers are supposed to do, I just wanna take you back to a concept that we learned in chapter four called hierarchy of objectives as you can see it right here. And what we learned was that a business will have its long-term aims, where they want to be in 10 years, 15 years, but they will not be achieved until, unless they have broken it down into corporate objectives, yearly objectives that businesses have to achieve, which then are breaking down into individual departmental objectives, and then are broken down into employee targets. Now, people who decide the aims are surely the owners, the long-term directors of the business. People who would uh, decide the corporate objectives, the every year business objectives, are the employees of the business. And these guys would be the CEO, the head of the departments. 
Now, what are they doing? The CEO is the manager of the entire business. Marketing, head of marketing would be the manager of the marketing department and HR, the HR department, so on and so forth. So when we are trying to understand what the business is supposed to do, a manager plays a crucial role in giving their input as to what the business objective should be. And whatever that objective is, they will then have to translate that into the individual departmental objectives. And again, that's where the role of the department head comes into play, who is the manager in this situation. He has to explain to his uh, particular department how will they contribute to the overall corporate objectives. So let's say it's marketing, and the head of marketing will say, okay, you make sure there are more, there's more promotion this month. You make sure there's more research. You make sure the product has better quality. So making breaking down those do corporate objectives into individual employee targets will be done by the manager of that department. So at every stage of the most basic function of a business, setting objectives, a pivotal role is played by the manager, which is of course first, understanding what the objective is and make sure that the whole department and everyone working under that manager has the required resources and the right skill set to go ahead and help the company achieve their objectives. So what are managers doing? What are they supposed to do? How uh, are they, how is their performance evaluated? They'll be performing many functions. And first of all, and what we've just learned through a hierarchy of objective is they are responsible for setting the objectives. So whatever the, uh, the departmental objectives would be, they will be broken down into individual employee targets. That's what the manager is doing in that instance. Now, once those employees or those departments are given their objectives, then they have to figure out what type of resources do we need. For example, if it's the operations department, you know that they're going to need a place to work, a warehouse, they know they're gonna need skin labor, a little bit of machinery. So they have to make sure that they have all the required resources in place for all the employees to achieve their targets. And that's what a manager is doing. On top of that, a manager is in a position of leadership. He will have multiple people who are reporting to him or her. And it's one of the jobs of the manager to make sure that those people feel satisfied and motivated to come and work harder for the business. So one side of it is making sure everybody understands what they're supposed to do. And while they're trying to achieve their objective, they're also having fun coming to work with a positive mindset. Also, as we discussed in the very first slide, the manager is responsible for dealing cross departments. So if marketing needs something from HR, the manager will be the link, not individual employees or with any other department. So they have to make sure that all departments are aligned and working with one another on the same corporate objective. And finally, the only way you get promoted is if you perform. And it's the manager who looks or who assesses a ma a, an employee's performance, whether they're up to what the expectation was. If they're not, do they need training? Do they need advice? Do they need a warning? Those sort of decisions will be taken by the manager. So it's, it's quite large scale as to what the manager, any manager has to do, whether they are a CEO or maybe uh, the head of the administration department or the head of kitchen services, for example. Regardless of the position, the functions remain the same. They'll be giving objectives. They'll make sure that the workers have the required resources to achieve those objectives. They also feel motivated to achieve those objectives. Of course, motivation is a very basic instinct of people and workers, HR has to do with people coordinating activities and finally making sure that whoever's worked hard, whoever deserves a promotion, deserves an increment in their salary, gets it fairly. There are functions of a manager. Now, throughout HR, we're gonna come across a number of different theorists who have had their say on the various matters on HRM. And when it comes to this chapter, there are three theorists that you should be aware of. First of those is Mr. Mintzberg. And Mr. Mintzberg had a theory on the functions of a manager. 
and he says that in total there are 10 things that all managers have to do 10 roles that they must perform regardless of their position in the hierarchy of the company and he divided those 10 roles into three categories he said the three of those roles are of an interpersonal category three of roles are of informational and four roles are of the decisional category we'll start off with interpersonal roles and there are three three different types of interpersonal roles namely figurehead leader and liaison and a manager will be performing all three of these roles just in different times in different capacities and let's start with the first one figurehead you know as a manager when you perform the role of a figurehead you are sort of like a symbolic leader of the company you will be representing the company in let's say uh, you have a new factory opening you are presenting something to the government maybe a new products being launched and you want to say something to the customers so this is someone who is a symbolic leader that is the role of a figurehead and all managers will have to perform this number two leader of course is someone who's able to motivate people to work towards a common goal and since all managers will have multiple people working under them they need to show their leadership qualities and we we'll look at leadership in more detail in a later video in this chapter liaison okay now the word liaison simply means to facilitate and as a manager you must facilitate or coordinate activities between the different departments of the business so for example if the operations department manager let's say the factory manager needs to uh, needs more labor to double their production they will need to coordinate or be the link between operations and hr so that hr can bring in the people that operation require so they need to be that link that is the role of a liaison okay. so those are the interpersonal roles number two or the second category is that of informational roles and informational roles are monitor disseminator and spokesperson okay. now as a monitor under the informational role what you're supposed to do is make sure you're keeping an eye on what's happening outside of the business that might impact the business Okay, so things in the external environment, changes in consumer patterns, changes in the economic condition, currency rates going up and down. So making sure you're collecting data that is relevant to the business, that is the role of a manager. So if you're an operations manager, if you find out about some new technology that might improve your own production process, that's something that they should be monitoring. Disseminator. Okay. The word disseminate means to simply sort okay. and making sure that whatever information you had collected as a monitor, you're relaying it to the right people in the organization. So let's say the government says uh, we're going to increase the taxes on companies. That's something that's happened in the external environment and the manager must make sure that that information is relayed to the finance department of the business because they will be dealing with that. So if the CEO reads it or if a CEO gets a notification, he must sort it out and forward it to the right department. Disseminator. Mm -hmm. And finally, within of informational roles comes that of a spokesperson. Okay. Now, of course, spokesperson is a public figure, someone who will represent the company and speak on behalf of the company. So let's say if, uh, if the government calls them in for a fine or a court case, the manager will go and perform the role of a spokesperson. Or let's say uh, you have to raise more finance and you want to give a presentation at the annual general meeting of a public limited company and that's where the manager will be speaking as a spokesperson on behalf of the company explaining the profitability of the business so it's all about collecting information and distributing information to whoever needs it the different stakeholders in the business under the informational category of Minsberg's 10 roles finally we come to the decisional roles and there are four decisional roles that all managers have to perform, starting with being an entrepreneur. 
Yeah, now you'll remember entrepreneur from our very first video together. An entrepreneur is someone who takes the risk, who innovates, who is hardworking, who uh, will never take no for an answer. So all those qualities must be exhibited by a manager since they are in a business that is essentially an enterprise. So it requires the input from all managers, their entrepreneurial skills in order for the business to collectively grow. Disturbance handler. Okay. Now this obviously does not mean that you're going to stop fights. Okay. Okay. Yeah. HR is about people and no, shouldn't be fighting, but it's this disturbance is the sort of disturbance that might hurt the business. For example, uh, let's say COVID, right? We, we all felt when the pandemic hit, that was a disturbance that literally uh, put a lot of businesses on the brink of closing and so many did close down as well. So before you get to the point of closure, the manager should take notice of this and try to find ways to counteract those threats. Uh, a similar uh, example would be, let's say a competitor opening just down the street from you. That's a disturbance in your external environment and until and unless you make a point of addressing it head on, it's going to hurt you in the long run. So disturbance handler keeps an eye on things that might impact a business negatively. Number nine, resource allocator. This one's easy to understand. Resources are land, labor, capital. And as a manager, you've got to decide within your department who gets what share of the labor, the capital, and things. So let's say uh, being the CEO, you will have an, an X amount of money to spend each year. Let's say that's 100 rupees. He will decide what proportion goes to which department. And let's say this year operations needs a bigger budget because the raw material is becoming more expensive. So they will s give more budget to uh, the operations department and that's the decision they're taking as a resource allocator. Maybe marketing needs more people so we will move more labor from one department to another. So making sure that the right combination of resources are available to everyone is what the role of a ro resource allocator is. And finally, negotiator. Okay, of course, all everybody then wants to get a nice deal out of things. You want everybody wants to feel like they're the king of bargain, right? So, in any way, when you're dealing with outside stakeholders, a manager should make sure that the business gets the best deal out of that situation. Negotiate a good price, get the maximum in return for it. That's the role of a negotiator uh, as a manager. So, in total, ten roles, Mr. Minsberg. It's very clear on what each of these roles mean for a manager, and they will all be performing these different roles at different times depending on what the current situation is.